Happy April, Conscious Embodiment audience. <laughs> Welcome first to Conscious Embodiment Astrology and Dreams with your host, Dr. Mike Lennox. I'm here as I am every week with producer Zoe. Howdy, Zoe. Hello, hello. <laughs> it is April, which means we are technically in what I'm going to call the easiest and loveliest month of the year, although I'm sure. By the time this episode is done, I will have qualified that statement just a tiny little bit. But man, oh man, it is true and accurate that the first three months of 2022 were rough. Mm -hmm. And so we, we get into an easier passage in April for one thing, just because the, the really bumpy, challenging personal astrology that was kind of brutal the first three months of the year has passed. And so we're just in different territory because some really clunky emotional passages were so prominent the first couple of months of the year. And is it also because it's airy season, beginning of the uh, Yeah, absolutely. Astrology? That energy carries with it the possibility of like thrusting forward in the delight of spring, <laughs> at least in the Northern Hemisphere. And yes, that we have in our bodies a sense of powerful movement that the Aries energy brings, right? So you're absolutely right about that. But also there's things brewing energetically this month that just bring us back to things like love and compassion and forgiveness and creativity and yummy manifestation energy that is driven by Neptune in Pisces and Jupiter in Pisces coming together this month. Mm. I've hinted about this a little bit in past weeks. Yeah, I'll talk about it in earnest when it's actually peaking, but it's worth a few moments to talk about why is the month of April a little yummier? And it starts with Neptune and uh, Jupiter coming together. The beauty of the relationship between Jupiter and Neptune is all about manifestation and this notion that we are co-creators with the universe when it comes to those new thought you know, principles of you know, law of attraction and manifesting the life of your desire through aligning your thoughts, intentions with a felt sense of what's possible. Why that is, is because Jupiter is the manifestation planet himself the social planet that represents or reflects all of the yummy, expansive, abundant things we wish to experience being alive and in a body. So Jupiter governs all of our capacity to generate new, delightful consciousness. How we do that is through this co-creation with the universe. That's a spiritual principle in action. The idea that we, as human beings in bodies, have these ideas in our minds and felt sense of desire in our hearts. And when we tap into the power of spirituality, of source, of the creative force behind all of existence, which in astrology we understand as a Neptune consciousness, then we're cooking with gas when these two planets come together. Really simply, the reason why this particular gathering that happens every 12 years is so juicy is because it's happening in the sign of Pisces, the ruling sign that Neptune governs, and the sign that Jupiter used to govern before Neptune was discovered a couple hundred years ago. I talked about this last week a little bit. 
Last time they got together, it was Aquarius. Next time in 12 years, it'll be Aries. So this is the only moment that anybody who's listening to this podcast will experience this particular conjunction in our lifetimes. So that peak of lovely energy is smack dab in the middle of this month, and that alone is going to make April a nicer energy to move through because it's the greatest powerful sort of wave of energy that the month features. We are also in between the big, chunky, challenging months behind us and the eclipse season that's coming in May that's going to make next month a little bit bumpy and intense again. A couple of other little things that will happen this month that are yummy is Venus will move into one of her favorite signs, Pisces, where Jupiter and Neptune is, and she spends all month leaning into a conjunction that hits at the very end of the month, where love in our hearts and our open emotional bodies will be connecting directly with Jupiter's capacity to manifest. And Neptune's ability to connect us great, you know, directly into our spiritual sensibility. And we end the month in that gorgeous wave of energy that comes along with the new moon that sets and kicks off eclipse season. I am so looking forward to the end of the month. Okay. That sounds amazing. <laughs> now, listen, there's two things I also want to say that kind of contradict this, or at least give us the other side of the, of the coin. Mm -hmm. One is that life is still happening, like life on life's terms. Just because the month right. has yummy energy doesn't mean that we're no longer living on planet Earth. <laughs> or in a human body. <laughs> in a human body where everyone has lost their minds and hearts. Speaking to the world having lost their mind, there's something that hits right at the top of next week, which I'll talk about in greater detail in next week's podcast. But Saturn, the planet of reckoning and difficult lessons that we have to move through, will be squaring the nodes of the moon next week. That does indicate that the challenges that are out there on the world stage, meaning, you know, the news, <laughs> will be difficult to navigate for us. Difficult in understanding or difficult in receiving proper information or processing it? A, B, C, D, or all of the above, D, right? All of the above. <laughs> Listen, life is a Rorschach test. Every event that rises up in current sort of, you know, news looks like something you have to grapple with. But what it really is is just a projective test where what you think and feel about something that has happened out there in the world is really just a reflection of your values, your intentions, your traumas from the past, and your reactivity. So in terms of the quality of how the month might be difficult, that's very individual. Okay. And it's really based on what you're focusing on. Mm -hmm. Look at the chaos, you will feel chaotically. Look at the love, you will feel love. And certainly in this month of April 2022, there's an enormous amount of love to focus on, but still you choose. It's your free will. One last thing I want to say about how yummy the month of April is. Not everybody's going to feel the yummy and not just because you're focused in the wrong place. Some people are going through more difficulty in their current experience based on their individual natal chart. And things that might be happening to them that's not happening to their, you know, friends and neighbors. We each dial into these moments based on who we are. Mm. And so if your narrative has been particularly difficult and it continues because that's how your life is unfolding, yes, there will be more access to love and forgiveness and compassion and possibility this month. But you might not feel the great yummy that someone else is experiencing because how the current landscape is hitting your individual chart varies greatly from person to person. So in a very loose way, think of April as a more lovely month, but relative to the energetic, emotional, and psychological experience of your January, February, 
and March. So here I go talking about how lovely the month is. But today and tomorrow, we're actually moving through a Mars transit that could be pretty dicey. Mars is the planet of action and decision making. Right now, he's in the sign of Aquarius, which is the innovative, out of the box kind of try a new thing, take a risk, be impulsive. Not a bad thing at all, except that today, <laughs> Mars is conjunct with Saturn, the great teacher. Interesting. Right? As we move through the weekend, peaking today and an influence that we'll feel in the first couple of days of this week, some of y'all are going to be bumping into challenges that would be well described by the planet of action and the great teacher coming together. So let's outline one or two things that that could cover. One is, if Mars is the planet that governs or reflects our goals and our actions and the projects we're working on. And Saturn's teaching capacity often is expressed through delay or breakdown or changes in your plans because something doesn't go the way you wanted it to. That's one definite potential artifact of Mars and Saturn coming together. Mars rules our passions and the difference between whether we're be able to be assertive versus aggressive. And so if the planet that carries your capacity to be thrown into anger, <laughs> and that might be something you struggle with, Mars and Saturn coming together could be featuring lessons around sort of unbridled anger and passion or reactivity especially given Mars in the sign of Aquarius, is more likely to inspire people to behave out of character or to do things that they might not have done under another influence. Aquarius is the mansion ruled by Uranus, the unexpected wildcard energy. So certainly issues of over-impulsivity or acting too fast without thinking or preparation could be lessons today, yesterday, tomorrow, these couple of days. So we do start this week out with a real bump in the road. And you just want to make sure that as you do move through these first couple of days of the week, that if there's a lesson for you to learn because something has been delayed or broken down or didn't go the way you wished it had, then you're focused on what you're learning rather than bemoaning, you know, that you had the lesson rise up in the first place. Mars will square the nodes of the moon tomorrow, which is a indication that the things that are coming up right now this week in terms of actions we're taking or choices that we're making, they are important for our forward movement because the planet is touching the nodes that reflect our forward movement. But because it's a square, which is conflict energy, today and tomorrow are definitely days that some of us are going to crash into the brick wall. Do your best to just, you know, move through that with as much grace as you could possibly muster. <laughs> Now, something else is happening tomorrow, Tuesday, at 7.19 p.m. Pacific time. But who's counting? Well, I'm counting because that's the moment that Venus moves into Pisces. This is, of course, the thread of energy this month that will allow us to take that gorgeous energy that Jupiter and Neptune are generating and for us to feel it individually in our hearts. Hmm. That's the real juice of April. Isn't so much this amazing conjunction once in a lifetime that I talked about a few minutes ago. That's the backdrop. What makes it something we will all have the potential to tap into is the personal planet of Venus joining that mansion. 
personal planets reflect the personal experience. Venus is the heart. That heart only exists in us as individuals. In fact, there's something kind of yummy about Venus as a personal planet connecting with Jupiter as a social planet that reflects things that happen to all of us in the collective, then going a little bit further and pulling in Neptune, that's the higher consciousness planet, all of which are driven by love. I've been hearing a couple of my friends talk about how, I don't know if it's in their chart or is this the general astrology? Is what you're talking about related to how we're thinking about how people relate to the public and how they show themselves huh. in public? Oh, interesting. You know, my impulsive reaction to that question is sort of no. Okay. <laughs> well, Venus is a personal planet and her moving into Pisces is actually going to have us turn within a little bit and feel okay. our personal interior sense of heartfelt love, desire, connection to that Piscean capacity to create as an inner experience. And that might eventually have impact with the public expression of somebody. And yes, this is a manifestation month. So that oh. could connect to outward expressions. But where does Jupiter fall into that then? Because isn't Jupiter social? Yes, but here you go. You got the personal, then the social, then the outer in like three layers of all the ways that we experience life. Mm. We experience life in our persons. So that's Venus and Pisces. Mm -hmm. We experience life as a social construct of moving about the outside world, creating things to have a more fun and yummy life. That's Jupiter and the social sort of ring of energy. And then Neptune is the outer soulful, higher consciousness ring of energy. So your question is yes, no. Like the yes. This is a thread of energy that builds all month that does ultimately allow us to create much more powerful outward expressions of what we desire. Mm -hmm. But the focus on the energy starting Tuesday, Wednesday of this week when Venus moves into Pisces and joins that little party, that the focus should certainly during the month of April, be about the inside of your emotional body, what you desire, and drumming up the felt sensation, the, the emotional equivalent of receiving that which you desire. So the whole month has a tremendous opportunity to tap into that basic fundamental principle of the law of attraction. That law says you've got to have an idea about what you want to create, and then you have to generate the powerful felt sense of the joy and delight of having that thing already created and manifested. And there's just no better setup than Venus, Jupiter, and Neptune in the sign of Pisces to create a kind of amplification of how the law of manifestation works from the heart out. Mm -hmm. So a couple of other little things about Venus and her ingress into Pisces. One is she's back at her full regular speed, three and a half weeks in a sign. She was moving so slowly since November that just the fact that she's moving at her regular pace means that we are operating more at a regular pace of how we live in our hearts as opposed to what we were doing for three months, which was slowing down to do some deep work. Now we're cooking with gas again. I also like this. All of the deep, deep work that we did uh, in our hearts and our emotional bodies was reflected by Venus in Capricorn. Venus in Aquarius is a much cooler place for the heart, right? It's not a very emotional sign. It's super intellectual. And so... Well, I don't know that everybody would have actually felt and identified with this. From the archetypal perspective, the last bunch of weeks with Venus in this detached, more thought-based, 
mansion of Aquarius might have given us all a little bit of a break from some of the deeper experiences of, of, of the work we were doing while Venus was in Capricorn. Don't get me wrong. My DMs and messages made it very clear that even with Venus in Aquarius, people were <laughs> filled with feelings and going through a lot of emotional depths. But there really is a difference between the emotionality that we experience with Venus in an air sign than Venus in a water sign. Mm -hmm. Another reason why it's yummy that Venus is in Pisces for the rest of the month is she's just so happy here. It's the sign of what's called her exaltation. And rather than explain what that means technically, I'll just explain it archetypally. Venus is happy in Pisces because Pisces knows that we're all connected and that that love is everything. And of course, Venus is just in heaven in that sign. So notwithstanding that our emotions may get more full <laughs> with Venus moving into a water sign, the nature of Pisces water is more connected to the collective and less about the inner turmoil of feelings that we're very sensitive around. So you will hear me talking a lot more about Venus and Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces as the month progresses, because it gets yummier and yummier with each passing week, but it starts this week, and we should all be very grateful for Venus entering Pisces tomorrow. So here's another little transit, actually what's called an ingress. Ingress is astrology speak for moving into. Egress means moving out of. And Mercury, the planet of thought, communication, and negotiation, and interactions from the neck up, is moving into Taurus on Saturday. Taurus is one of the signs ruled by Venus. It's the grounded, earthy, sensual, loving aspect of Venus consciousness. Hmm. Venus rules Taurus. Venus also rules Libra. In Libra, it's all about relationships and love that we experience by looking out at the world and feeling something reflected back to us. Venus in Taurus is just pure eros, pure sensuality. Taurus came along in the you know, in the evolution of the Zodiac and created Earth herself. First, there was the void in Pisces. The ram bursts through saying, well, I'll go. And he bursts up in the consciousness of I am. Hence the mansion we're in, the I am mansion that we're in. The very next mansion is Taurus, where we suddenly was like, well, if I am, where am I? <laughs> and Taurus says, Earth. Mother builds the home. You're grounded. Yeah. yeah. You're home and it's a loving place and it's sensual and juicy to be in a body. Now, <laughs> if you've been in a body for a minute, you know that it ain't so juicy to always be in a body. <laughs> it's fucking hard. Complicated. Complicated. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the purity of archetype, it's the body is the source of everything stunning about what it is to be alive. All of our ecstasies and our pleasures come from our body. And Taurus is responsible for that. So back to Mercury in Taurus. You know, Mercury is the communication planet. And so how we interact with each other and with ourselves is driven by what sign the planet of communication has moved into. In Taurus, we're more grounded, more stable. We're slower to react with Mercury in Taurus, because it's a much more measured, slow-moving Earth sign. And through the principle of rulership, there's this thing called disposition. Just like you and I might have a disposition on a given day, and that'd be like your mood or something like that. That's what disposition is. Astrologically, if Mercury is in Taurus, a sign that's ruled by Venus, Venus is giving Mercury his disposition. 
for the three and a half, or the two and a half weeks, rather, from April 10th on. So that means our thoughts and our communication and the style and quality of same will be governed by the planet of love. So with all of this Piscean energy and Venus moving into a sign that she's exalted in, Mercury moving into territory that Venus holds sway over is just going to add to the month's capacity to deliver us the nicest period since the year began. So. It's going to be a lovelier month than January, February, or March was. How you experience it is going to largely reflect the narrative that you're in, right? It ain't magic, and it's not a movie where in the third act, the hero sweeps in and changes everything. We're still working on whatever we're working on. But truly, what you focus on does create your experience. Life is a Rorschach test. And how you react and respond to it says way more about you than the events that might be inspiring the feelings that you're having as you look out into the world. So given the fact that it's a month where we're not quite captivated by the astrology in the way we were in the first few months, where nobody escaped the deep dives that the double retrograde and the hanging out with Pluto generated from us. We are now really more fully in the land of free will, where we get to choose what we're focusing on. Focus on the chaos, get more of that. Focus on the love, get more of that. Have at it, everybody. All right, it's dream segment time. Every week, Dr. Michael will interpret dreams that are sent in via email or take a live caller. If you would like your dream interpreted on the podcast, you can go ahead and email us at dreams at michaelenix.com. Hopefully your dream will make it onto the show. This dream was sent in by Lisa. So a little background from Lisa is that her mother passed away about five years ago. And she's an only child, so her father is the last of her immediate family living. They've had a complicated relationship her whole life. And without the mother as the buffer, there's been a lot to work on in the last few years. So here's her dream. It was nighttime and I was driving down the road in my car when on the right hand side, I saw my dad in a parking lot, but he didn't see me. I drove past, but then decided to turn around and say hi. I pulled the car around and drove back. And when I got back to the parking lot, he was now at the edge of the road waiting for me. He was standing with his arms at his sides, facing me, staring directly at me and not smiling. He told me he was glad I was here and he needed my help with something. We went inside the building behind the parking lot and I noticed he was moving out. It must have been an apartment building. He had all of these large pieces of furniture and asked me to move them out for him so that they would block the view of him moving. He didn't want anyone to see him moving out. I remember feeling disappointed because he didn't want to see me He was just happy because he could use me for something that he wanted for himself. Thank you for considering my dream for the show. Have a great day, Lisa. All right, great dream. Clear, clear, clear dream. First of all, I'm very grateful for the setup and the understanding of, then this this is not uncommon, you know, that when family dynamic changes and there's been triangulation, which I'm guessing is that mother and daughter aligned in a, in a more direct way. Father is the triangulated parent with mom now gone. And this, this dream really is directly reflecting 
what's up right now with dad, right? So first of all, we start with nighttime. So any nighttime dream indicates that we're in the shadow. We're in something hidden. We're in something that's been buried or that is harder to examine because mm-hmm. it's uncomfortable. Like nighttime dreams always tell us we're in some measure of shadow. Yeah. The driving in the car piece tells us we're in consideration of Lisa's sort of move through life, right? The social experience, the work business experience, the community experience. Any movement in a dream is about movement through life, but depending on how sort of either intimate it is, like walking, it was just the private path. And the further you get up to like vehicular movement, the more we're in transition and change like an airplane ride, right? So walking, intimate journey, airplane ride, big transition, and driving is the middle road of Lisa's having a dream considering how she's moving through her life. Mm -hmm. Parking lots means that there's a pause in the action in order to handle something. So in, in, in waking life, it would be like, I pause my car outside the shopping mall so I can do the thing I came to do, which was shop. But it's a dream, right? So the parking lot that dad is in says that the dreamer, Lisa, needs to stop her movement to handle something that needs her Mm. attention. Even the idea that parking lots on the right hand side that's the masculine side so that's the daddy side as opposed to say the Mm -hmm. mommy side the idea that she sees him but he doesn't see her tells me that the dream is about something that's in her heart to potentially try to express like she sees it she sees dad she's like oh i gotta turn around that's the dream (laughs) saying Because you're recognizing that there's some no buffer left and lots coming up now. The dream is saying, yeah, you got to handle this in a way that isn't just driving past it, ignoring it, or pretending it doesn't need more Mm -hmm. attention. So she stops. She does so. He's waiting, in fact, because this is something that needs to be addressed. I think the whole thing of... Feeling used by him in the dream is probably reflective of the waking life relationship and the conflict therein that somehow there isn't an acknowledgement of who Lisa really, really is, but somehow a function of what she can provide for him or some dynamic that Lisa certainly knows what it is, so I don't need to be exact about that. The fact that he's moving out does mean that there's change and transformation going on. Remember, it's Lisa's dream. It's not the father's dream. That he's moving suggests that there can be movement in their relationship. Mm -hmm. But she's going to have to help. Put in some work. That's right. And not just sort of like, well, I don't like how you treat me. I'm going to drive right past. It's like, no, the dream is telling her to stop. Somehow even this blocking the view that he doesn't want anybody to know that change is happening or that this needs to be addressed, but it ain't his dream. It's Lisa. Yeah. So even that element of this section is revealing resistance. Uh huh. And it's really that simple. Cause then she's just sort of wakes up. Right. And the dream is over. So the message of the dream, I think is most exemplified by the U-turn. By her making that decision. That's right. So it doesn't matter so much even what happens when she gets there, that he's not smiling, that he says there is help needed, that it's uh, hard work, that he's manipulating, that he's blocking the view. The real important thing is she turned around because she needs mm-hmm. to. She needs to address the challenges and the conflicts because they're there. Yeah. So that's what the dream is telling me. There's a need to push past those initial wounded thoughts of my dad perceives me in this way. He wants things for me, but isn't, you know, generous back or whatever. Again, Lisa knows what we're talking about. I don't have to be exact about it because our dreamer does. But the dream is definitely telling us that it's telling her (laughs) she needs to make a U-turn And deal with some of the stuff that's coming up with, you know, now that the buffer of mom is gone. 
even that glad you are here, I need your help, is an indication that there really is a need to go in the direction of healing some of the rift. Mm -hmm. I don't think the dream says that she's got to do it to him or with him. Like, this could be an internal experience, right. you know? I'm not saying, oh, well, Lisa, you better talk to your dad. It's like, I don't care if Lisa talks to her dad or not. She should do what's in right. her heart. But the dream is telling her she needs to take a look at the myths and the disconnect that happens when there's something, some dynamic between father and daughter that winds up leaving her feeling like, and then we fill in the blank, like he only wants my help for things, doesn't return the generosity, whatever the issues there are in. But certainly, something wants some attention. Make the U-turn, go into the parking lot and address the change transformation that's taking place. Because clearly the relationship between daughter and father is changing. That's what the moving is suggesting. Hmm. And something about it not being visible or seen means that it needs to be seen or looked at certainly by her. Right. Cool. Thanks for sharing, Lisa. Thank you for listening to Conscious Embodiment, Astrology and Dreams with Dr. Michael Lennox. You can find us on Apple Music, the iHeartRadio app, and anywhere you find your favorite shows. Head on over to michaellennox.com for information on astrology readings, the daily Astro Alert subscription, upcoming classes, and to join the mailing list.